I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. And uh, we have Ryan and Veronica with us, and they're fellow Oregonians. They also had a sighting of one of these creatures in an area, and I'm going to go ahead and give that area out. Uh, it's called Winberry Creek, and it's... Uh, it's got a very long history of the wild man of Wim Wimberry Creek. There's actually a paper years and years and decades ago that wrote a whimsical article about the wild man of Wimberry Creek. Um, but before we get going, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. And if you like the show, let us know. It really does help us if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to support the show, you can do that for as little as a dollar a month. And we have a link to Patreon in the description. So with that said, um, I'm going to hand the mic off to Ryan and Veronica. Tell me what happened. Well, R Ryan went through something different over in Horton, but I... I had the Winberry Creek um, experience and I was going hunting and it was over a decade ago. It was, it was quite a while ago, but I never talked about it because it, to this day, I still don't have a point of reference for it because it was so, I just had nothing to compare it to because it was so strange and so different. And, you know, and I still, it almost takes my breath away because I just, I, it was that life-changing for me, you know, at that moment. And um, I went hunting and I was up by Winberry Creek and I had other people with me. And um, we came up to like one of those logging roads where they put the chain in the barricade in front of it. And it hadn't been used for a long time. You could tell because there's flowers and, you know, brush and stuff that had grown up in the middle of the road. So you could tell the road wasn't traveled. And we went up there and we went for quite a ways until we came to like a meadow clearing area and it was just beautiful day and the clearing i i always re will remember the clearing because it was just beautiful looking i mean it was majestic you know like organ scenery is it was just majestic and all of a sudden to the over in the brush, I I started to smell, well, first of all, I started to smell something really bad. And I thought, God, did the people I, I'm with, did they not shower or something? Because I was like, I, I, I couldn't imagine what I was smelling. It smelled like just a horrid smell. And all of a sudden, I, I turn around and I see this thing that's in the bushes. And I had no, I don't even know how to describe it other than it wasn't a man. It wasn't an ape. It was, it was really big and it had person-like features in the face but it had hair and the color kind of camouflaged into the brush if that makes any sense at all um and it let out a scream of bloody murder i mean just i will never forget this blood curdling roar that it did at us and we couldn't move i mean we had rifles and stuff. we just couldn't even move i mean we were just like stuck in place and I mean, it took us quite a while to just even know what to do. And then it got up and it ran off, but it, it broke all the tree brush and everything that was in it. But when it stood up and it ran off, it didn't stand up like a normal animal would stand up. It just kind of lunged up kind of and it went off, but it was huge. It was absolutely larger than any man I'd ever seen in my life. Even the you know, that you would see in the Guinness Book of Record. I was taller than he is. I mean, it was huge. And his body mass was huge. I say he because I don't know what it was, uh, he or she. But uh, it was just, and it smelled horrible. But it, it, it scared the lights out of me to where I never went hunting again. I mean, I, I was that scared. And I don't know if scared is a good word, but I was that shocked. Maybe that's the best word for it. But... I mean, I, it will forever be changed by that because I know what I saw and I know what we, we all saw and it, 
you know, we're professionals and stuff. We all have, you know, lives and stuff. And, you know, for a long time, I didn't talk about it because I just, I had no point of reference to talk about it. I, I, what do you say? You know, it's like, I saw this huge ape thing. I mean, it wasn't an ape, but it wasn't a person, but it, it stood upright. I mean, it was upright. How long? Well, two interesting things. One, you had somebody that you were hunting with and you spoke with him and he said that uh, he reminded, he jogged your memory that he did something. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, he went, he went towards it. And um, I don't remember. I mean, I was in such shock myself that, you know, this is just his information to me. Um, Cause I, I mean, I was so focused on what I had just, I couldn't move. And um, he went after it, after it had started running off, you know, to see what the hell it was, you know, I mean, we didn't know what it was. And uh, he said that, I mean, all the brush was broken down. I mean, he saw the same thing I did, you know, we what, both did um, it. it was one quiet ride home. Let's just put it that way. Right. I mean, and and for years and years, um, you know, we just didn't discuss it and didn't talk about it. And it was like, it was so traumatic almost, you know, where it was like, we didn't know to be scared of it if we weren't scared or how to feel about it. And I still don't. I mean, it's kind of relieving getting off my chest finally, because, you know, for so many years, you know, I, I know what I saw. I know what I saw. And well, you've I'm talked a about that. Person. And, and well, there's a, a condition. I don't know if it's a, a psychological condition or what, but where people are just driving home and nobody <laughs> says a word. And Will, I think you've been in that situation. Um, so the other question I had was, how long were you in the area? Did you just drive up and bam, it happened? Or were you out looking around a little bit uh how, how did that we work? were in the area for a little bit i mean we we had been walking up that road and once we came to that clearing it, we were there you know a little bit before that that happened i mean in that area at least and there was nobody else around i mean we were in pretty remote part of you know winberry creek and um you know it was pretty obvious we were in a remote part because there was no um like on that little road we were walking. I mean, it was overgrown. You could tell this was kind of tucked in, you know, a good good hunting spot because it hadn't been traveled. Okay, so you were in the area and you'd been there for a little bit. You're looking around. When did you first start smelling the smell and how much time between when you're smelling the smell to when you actually saw the creature? There wasn't too much time from the time I started smelling it to the time I saw it. Because I was looking around. I mean, I was looking around like, who smell? What? I mean, everybody kind of got this look on their face like, what the? You know, it was horrible smell. I mean, it was like death smell, you know? Uh, but even different, it was like, it, not bathing, just stinky. It was horrible smelling. I'd never smelled that smell either before because it wasn't death and it wasn't because I've smelled, you know, when somebody passes or whatever. But it, it was different. It was it was just a foul odor. But it was a strong stench, let me tell you. So, and I smelled it after it left. I still smelled that smell. It stayed permeated kind of. Okay, so it kind of lingered around. What time of year, uh, what time of day was this? This would probably be, I'd say, around maybe, um, well, uh, probably like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was it was right in late summer, early fall. Okay. Like this hunting season opens. It was because it was still nice enough outside. And Oregon weather is usually rainy and stuff, but it was still nice enough where you didn't have to have a major coat on. You know, the sun was out that day. It was a beautiful day. I mean, it was just absolutely majestic day. And so I remember, you know, it was nice weather, great weather. 
Yeah, that is kind of uh, kind of unique, especially back then. It's kind of unique for Oregon weather in uh, in the fall. So deer hunting season, I think that would have been uh, October is when rifle season yeah. opens. Yeah, right around then. And and it was just a beautiful day, though. And, you know, we do get nice weather, hit and miss here and there in Oregon. <laughs> you know, on these, I mean, like today's a beautiful day here, you know, and it, it's already in September. So, I mean, it, it was a beautiful day. But I never went hunting again. I never went again. Yeah, it it's, it's changes your outlook, doesn't it? Now, do yes, you still go I, out in the woods? I, I do go out in the woods, but I'll tell you one thing. I, I'm a little paranoid. Not not very far. He'll tell you that we were all supposed to go camping. And, um, and I'm like very, uh, how would you put it? Yeah, you didn't want to go. Yeah, I didn't want. I, I was Paul Creek, mind you. He didn't tell me about this before. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I didn't share a lot of this because I, you know, I just it was a real personal thing to me at the time. You know, it still shocks me to death. <laughs> Talking, you know, I, I'm pretty rational and I like to know what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm one of those people that I need to see it, to believe it. And I see it and I saw it and I smelled it and it was right there. And, you know, I, I'm not a kook. I'm not a crazy, you know, I mean, I'm a homeowner and everything else and, you know, taxpayer. And, and I saw this thing and it just, I don't know how else to describe what I saw. Did you, um, you said you got a kind of a, a look at the face if you had to choose, sort of describe it, was there hair on the face? Was it, uh, you know, was it somewhat human looking or more apish or, or not neither of the above? It had, like, what was weird was the face had, like, camouflage, like, changing to, to fill. I don't know how to put it, but, I mean, it was bright enough out with the sun that I noticed the face had, like, it did have kind of like an ape look, but it had a man look. And there was hair on the face, but not tons of it. There was not tons of it on the face. The forest but it, the face was a different color than the hair on his body. I do remember that. Forrest, would you like to weigh in? On the, the hair? Yeah, in the, in um, the description. <clears throat> How close were you to it? I, that was something I, I was trying to determine. Um... I'm so bad with depth perception. Um, let's see. I was probably okay, Ryan. If I'm from here to your your kitchen, how about how far is that? Fifteen feet. About fifteen feet or less. Okay, and it was in it was in brush uh, when you saw it. Yes, <laughs> but it was clear as day. It, I mean, it was in yeah. brush, but it wasn't like thick thick brush. It was it was right before you know. It was you could make it out like all. You know, it was very evident. Did it have heavy brow ridges uh, like you would see on an ape uh, and uh, deep set eyes? It had, deep, it had different eyes. I don't want to say deep set or anything because I don't remember, but uh, uh, that's the honest answer. I don't remember, but I do remember it had very different facial features than any person. And, you know, you see feral people out in, in Oregon. There are feral people up in the woods. This was not one of those incidents at all because this was not a man. This was not a mm -hmm. man. This was not an ape. It was, it was, it was something I'd never seen before. It was, there's just no way it was a person, but it was no way that it was a man. I don't know how else, but the face, when our eyes met, it was, it was just utter, just, just, I couldn't even believe it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So you, 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 uh, you would call it a sensual look, like the, it was an, uh, an intelligent knowing look that you received from it? Yeah, it, it, was, it looked like it, I mean, it let, when it let out that scream, I mean, I just about, I mean, it, I don't know if it was trying to scare us off or if it was letting us know it was there or, but it, it was pretty pissed. You know, I, th I from the scream, I mean, it wasn't like, how do you do? It was like, get out of here kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's not uncommon for apes to do, do that, you know, scream at you. 
and it usually yeah. is. It's, uh, it's something that uh, they're, they're trying to induce fear in you. Um, <clears throat> but but uh, we have no apes running around in our woods <laughs> that, that I'm aware of. I mean, this, this, it was different too than an ape. It had more man features than an ape. Yeah. And I remember my days at cultural anthropology and, and all my anthropology, my physical anthropology classes and learning all the day. And, and it, it was like, it was too big to be an ape even. It was too big to be a person. It was so big. Because when, yeah. when it was running away in comparison to the trees that it was running towards, you know, around and past, it, I mean, it was it was clearing those top branches. I mean, it was big. Well, now, when you say it was running away from you, uh, did you actually see it on foot running or uh, uh, did you were you able to determine any uh, exactly how its method of running was? It, it wasn't leaping or anything. It was running. It was running uh -huh. like, like, it was like, like thump, 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 you know, with, how would you put that? Oh, by, yeah, yeah, it was, it was upright. Did it, did it crash through the brush to hear any, any of yes. that going on? Yes, yes. I mean, and, and it left quite a path afterwards um, because that, um, the person I was with did look at the path. I mean, it, and it just, demolished the the trees and the limbs that it, and and you know we weren't going to stick around for too much longer and and you know hunt it out you know because we were just wanting to go pretty soon <laughs> it was time to go <laughs> but that's that's what i remember you know if you had to guess um what do you think the height would have been over, I'd say over maybe nine foot. I mean, I'd say nine foot, you know, I mean, let's see how I'm five something. Um, wait, yeah, it was probably Ryan Jennifer. I'm just looking at how tall you take you and add another half of you. How tall would that be? Yeah. About nine foot. About nine foot. Easy. An easy nine foot. Well, now, when you saw this, was it standing upright or was it crouched in the, the, the brush? It was crouched in the brush until it stood up. Oh, okay. It ran off. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I know I wasn't looking at a tree stump and I know, you know, that, that's what make, makes this just so real. I mean, that it, it, it moved. I mean, it clearly moved. It clearly got up and ran. And, and, and it just, excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, we weren't drinking or anything. I mean, you know, we were hunting. So, I mean, there's no, uh, you know, altered state here or anything. And, you know, nobody was smoking anything, doing anything. Um, you know, we were of our right mind at the time and uh, had plenty of sleep the night before. I mean, uh, it just, we ate. I mean, it's, there's just no, uh, you know... Well, I was going to ask you when, when it when it got up, it just uh, it just kind of like lunged up off of its haunches. It didn't like push up with its with its arms or anything like that. I don't remember. I just know it up and out of there, and that's yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm just trying to be as honest and forthcoming as I can. And, yeah, no, I'm yeah, yeah I'm just uh, I'm just asking questions because uh, uh, that's um, sometimes that's what you hear is that they just they're just up. I mean, they they just lunge up all of a sudden. So it was very quick. it was very quick, quicker than a man could do it. I know oh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quicker than I could do it, I would need help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. To get well, up and like I think, <laughs> and I think there's probably a good reason for that. And uh, as, you know, uh, Will and Tom know where I'm going with this. With it, it tends to be with the, the the differentiation between humans and apes with the fast and slow twitch muscles. So uh, apes do that quite frequently. They just they just l uh, lunge upward, and that's the reason they can jump these immense 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 uh, distances and such too. And, you know, I, I just got a quick question. I never knew that Winberry Creek had any kind of history or anything. And 
I mean, what what's the history with it? That kind of creeps me out now. I guess <laughs> I never knew well, there was any, you know. Yeah, apparently it's a it's been a kind of an ongoing thing for for decades that I know of. I remember one of my older brothers. Uh, I think they're in Boy Scouts or something like that. They were camping there, and I, my gosh, I don't want to say this was back when Lincoln was still in office, but it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. And and they talked about it back then. But then there's a newspaper in Eugene called the Register Guard, I believe, and and one of the uh, it was it was kind of a human interest story, but they wrote a whimsical article about the wild man of Winberry Creek. And so it's something that's been going on for, you know, apparently it's, uh, you know, it's got some history to it. Wow. Well, Tom, I, help me out. Where is Winbury Creek? Okay, Winbury Creek is the lower Cascades. It's um, actually, here's what's interesting. We had a gentleman on a while back. He's a uh, mathematician, computer science professor, and he had an encounter not far from there, uh, his encounter was in Black Canyon Campground. And um, so that was, uh, it's kind of in the same neighborhood, but there's a huge reservoir. And so on the other side of the reservoir, there's something called, there's Fall Creek and then Wimberry Creek. So um, yeah, it's in the lower lower Cascades, uh, kind of the foothills of the Cascade Mountains are getting actually getting up there a little bit in elevation. If that answers your question. It's pretty remote. The area I was in was pretty way up there. Yes, yeah. it is. Okay, that's what I was kind of wondering if it was really remote or close to uh, yeah, a large city or anything. Yeah, it no. was pretty remote, and it was on a remote road that nobody had used in a long time. Uh -huh. um, Veronica, you, you and I had a kind of a humorous little discussion about in your anthropology class yeah. The professor was less than favorable nice. towards. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah. very nice to. And there was a gentleman in the class who was uh, in the worker relocation program where he was going from logging to whatever he was doing. Tell us that story. Yeah, I, it, this will always stick with me because I felt so bad for the guy. Um, he was a, a salt of the earth kind of person, uh, just a good old boy uh, logger and had spent his whole life in the woods, basically. And here he got displaced um, when the spotted owl thing was going on and everything. And he had to go back to school and try to get a new profession. And, you know, he, he was in his late 30s. He was kind of, you know... Um, you know, didn't fit in quite with the college scene very much. And, and he was sitting there and in our class, the teacher said, there's no such thing as a place where people haven't walked on this earth. They've walked everywhere. You know, there's no place that, you know, a Bigfoot could hide or anything like that because we would have found it. And he goes, well, I, you know, th that's not true because I've seen one. And she goes, no, you haven't. And she goes, there's no way. And she started making fun of this guy because of. Uh, his and he had, a, he had a two word response at one point, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if we could say it on the air, but he was pretty pissed off. And he goes, you know, I know what I saw. And, and there's, he goes, you know, all your books that you can read in the world are not going to sit there and make you smart enough to understand these words. I saw it, you know, and, and, and it's not going to change it. And, he, he was very, I, I remember talking to him after the class and I told him um, that I, you know, I believed him and that I, because you could just see in his eyes that he was telling the truth, you know, I mean, he was being genuine and she just shot him down, which makes me sad because when she was pushing her own beliefs instead of the facts or instead of the proof, that's not being a very good teacher, you know. I'm curious how much time she spent in the woods. Yeah, it makes me, yeah, I guess she worked here in, um, in Oregon as an anthropologist, but I don't know, but uh, she shouldn't be teaching, let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
Well, it makes me curious about, uh, you know, who she might be, because I tell you what, I watched the program uh, one, once upon a time, and it was on Bigfoot, and it was an anthropologist, and she was looking for, the, they were out in the Cascades somewhere, I don't remember where, but she was saying the exact thing, and that there was no place that, that one could hide, there wasn't enough food out there in the Cascades for them to eat. Uh, you know, well, and on and on and on, that's not uh, you true. Know, it's totally, <laughs> totally negative. And I'm not like, thinking, but you know, you've got grizzlies, you've got black bears. I don't think, I don't know if y'all got any grizzlies left in the cascades there or not, but you know, you do know that they exist up in Canada and up in Alaska and yeah. those are pretty big bears and there's plenty of food out there to, uh, for those. There's uh, lots of food. <laughs> So yeah, there's, there's lots no, of food. There's no reason why there wouldn't be a Bigfoot out there and have plenty of food for them, too. So, well, you know. Could fish. There, there's fish in the rivers, even, you know. I mean, there's plenty of food. Well, just think of all the hikers that are available. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to correct you on that. There's there's some hikers that are, and mushroom pickers that are no longer available. Yeah, we'll just we'll true. leave it at that. That's true. <laughs> just, yeah. two of them. just a just a item off the menu. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Forrest, I hate to ask this, and maybe we shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Can you describe this anthropologist? You know, just kind of you know, blonde hair, black hair, red hair. What did she look she like? Was in her she, 50s. she worked at uh, Lane Community College, and uh, oh, I'm sorry, did I say that? And um, she had a real chip on her shoulder. I kind of felt bad I had to pay for a class like that. <laughs> well, now, this, this lady that I saw, she had shoulder length hair, and she was a, a brunette. And I do not, I'll be yes. honest with you, I do not remember her, her name, but she was a brunette and that she had shoulder length hair. And yep. I, couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you what color of eyes or anything like that, but she was she fair was skin. An older and, and yeah, she was probably a fifth. This was probably a fifty-ish woman. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, yeah, you keep telling yourself that, lady. <laughs> yeah, she's a joy, isn't she? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just, I'm just glad I didn't have anthropological uh, professors that were like that. I mean, I had, I had one that was wonderful that was from India, and he had actually seen a yeti, and he. Um, you know, he had no inhibition about telling us uh, that he definitely was a believer. So, well, I'm a believer now. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, Ryan, you had one. So, we're going to jump across from the Cascades. We're going to move west across the valley over to the Oregon Coast Hills, which there's a ton i think there's equal amount of sightings in the oregon coast hill area as there are in the cascades and i gotta say you're in an area that's near and dear to my heart i'm just going to mention it it's uh, a little community just before as you're heading up to you probably recognize it triangle lake up in the yeah. coast hills and tell us what happened what what did you run into well I was out camping at Horton Pond, and uh, yeah, I don't really, I, it was the night before, my mom and her boyfriend were terrorized. I, I ended up going out, passing out next to the creek with a machete underneath it for safety. But, uh, <laughs> so they were camping, and they had the most terrible night. I get up, and they're getting ready to leave without me. <laughs> I mean, they were terrified over something. I can understand what it was. Well, one of her cats who she brought with her was missing still, so I was out looking for the cat, and I heard this blood, blood curdling. It sounded like a woman screaming across with a baby crying, but yet in a whistle. I don't know, like a, a coo whistle, you know? Uh, something I'd never heard before anyway, and I, I, so I was trying to identify that, asking my mom's boyfriend what he, uh, you know, what kind of animal was that, and he just said, get in the car, you know? <laughs> And, uh, you yeah, know, that's pretty much the basis of that. He would be able to tell you more. But... Yeah, it's not something that I heard from another animal ever. I, I spent my whole life in the woods out here, so. They're pretty so I know where, I know the area very well. I've been to Horton Pond. I don't know. How, how many years ago was this? About four or five years ago. 
Oh, okay. All right. So that's fairly recent. I was there, oh gosh, 20 years ago, I think. And and there was a, uh, they'd taken the flatbed of a rail car and that was the bridge to cross over the creek to get to the pond. Right. I think, uh, I think they've probably improved that now because that thing was pretty dangerous. But so tell us a little bit, uh, you know, give the details. What, what did this thing sound like? And and, I, and I'm sorry, I missed the part. Did you ever find the cat? That's important. Yeah, we did find the cat. We did find the cat, actually. It was uh, stuck underneath the driver's seat, and it would not come out. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, they were all terrified. That they wouldn't even leave the car. Actually, I have my mom with me. Um, see if I can drag her in here. Smart but, cat. Yes, exactly. Okay, here she is. Yeah. Just some Her name's Donna, by the way. Hello. Hey, Donna. How you doing? Hi. Okay. So hey, you went you camping at Horton schools. Pond. Oh yeah, Horton Lake or whatever it is. Horton Pond is where you go out, like um, hike the old hike 36 or something, Highway 36, and you go to you come along to High Pass, Low Pass Road. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Horton. And it, there was a little store down the very end that had. I this remember that. Um, a guy that ne- just disappeared, never did come back. And the they, owner of the store? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Else, yeah. Then someone else bought it and they were trying to tell me the story of it. I don't really recall, but I think that it could have been something like a, like, like a big butt or something like that, that maybe uh, t- took him. But when we went camping up there, I was with Ryan, my son and Dave and we pitched a tent a pretty big tent and I took my cats with me and my cats with me and it was getting dark and it was pretty much dark then when we got it up and all of a sudden just right close by like it was across the road or something in another up on the hill by the in the camp ground though and it was all this yelling and ha ha and and, and I didn't hear any words that the people that they said, but to me, my first thought was, "Oh my God, they're really bad men up here with um guns, and they're gonna <laughs> shoot, they're gonna kill us, and all this stuff." And I was, I was really scared. And then my cat started freaking out really bad, especially my long-haired black one. And I took, I finally got Dave to walk out to the car, and I put him in the car, and he went under the driver's seat. And he stayed there all through the rest of the time. We stayed there because it got daylight and I did, I wasn't scared anymore and I didn't hear it. But he had stayed under the car seat until we got miles away from there before he came out. And my other cats were really freaked out too. And we heard, just kept hearing that screaming and hollering noises. I thought they were drunk men, but my uh, Dave that was with me he just kept looking puzzled and, and he was nervous because I don't even have a weapon. And my son had a machete, but we couldn't find him at the time. So we didn't know where the machete went, but he, he was nervous and scared. Like, and so I, I, and he just really thoughtful when he's thinking about something. And later then he told me that, no, he did not think it was human that they were not men. He did not think that. He thought it was some big animal or something. And once we went outside and listened and they were, it was kind of hollering like, and then, and then he, we were getting back to the tent and he goes, really loud. He screamed it. And we went in the tent and bam, almost like you, you could hear something pound on the ground right outside the tent. And it screamed really bad. And he goes, Oh, I don't think I'll do that again. <laughs> And, and then later I heard that there was other people that said that they had sightings of, of like a Bigfoot creature in at Horton Lake and stuff. Donna, um, how many do you think were there that were doing those vocalizations? Three or four. Probably. Okay. And they were, now you were camped somewhere, I'm assuming. In a, uh, kind of, yeah, in yeah go ahead. Regular campground. Right next to the pond, it had a picnic table and everything. Okay, 
And where in relation to that was it like on the other side of the pond? Because I know if you go on one side of the pond, there's kind of a mountain there. Right on the pond. Uh, just up the hill from there. Just up, up the hill a little way. The, the, the sounds were coming water. from up the hill, definitely. Oh, they were. Okay. I got I, I'm, a little further up the hill. And what time of day was this? It was night. It was dark. And it, it kept getting stronger, kind of. And I just, we wanted, wanted to go, but I couldn't find Ryan. I didn't know where he was. I didn't want to really leave him there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was scared. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> they were going to get me with something. But um, yeah, then we, we waited and then we kind of fell asleep because the noise quit. And then it was getting daybreak, getting daybreak. And we heard. A ruffle, 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 all the birds and the ducks and stuff down in the water. And we didn't, I didn't hear any other screaming from that, but they were ruffled and, and like squawking and everything else and flew away. And then they quieted down and then it got daylight and I never heard anything else. And there was this guy came to the picnic table next to us and Dave started talking with him and and so I just started, you know, cleaning the cat things and getting them ready to get in the car a little more slowly than normal because I just, I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel threatened anymore, but it was daylight and, you know, and it's dark. I get scared. <laughs> uh, I never heard no more, but then I heard this lady came to camp all by herself because she wanted to retreat away. And she had a kayak and she said that her girlfriend or something came up there earlier one with it and camped out by herself. And she was going to uh, go out in that. And I go, well, you know, I don't I need to tell you something just because of what happened to us last night and how we heard those noises. And it seemed to phase her a bit. She just pitched her camp and she was staying. I don't know how she ever turned out by herself. But I wonder. <laughs> What time of year was this? This was probably about, it was getting fall, like about this time of year. Like right about this time. And that was about, how many years ago was that? That was four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. It was at the tops. Okay, so maybe back in 2017, 2018, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because the cat. The, the cats, the kittens, the, they were born in 2017, and they were bigger then. So maybe yeah. it was 20, they were 17, probably been 2018. Okay. And um, yeah, that, have you been, have you camped that area uh, I never went or? back. I never <laughs> went back. Right. But before yeah. then, had you camped in that area before? No, no, I hadn't. But I heard other people had. And they didn't have any ill reports. But, uh, but when we were telling them about it, you know, and, and they could see Dave definitely thought there was something there. And he was scared. They go, whoa. <laughs> and, but they said then that they had heard some strange things about there, too. And I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's interesting. I've been to that area, and uh, I um, and Dave lost often... his phone there, never to be seen again. His phone. <laughs> oh well, I, I'm sure the creatures have it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> Probably making all kinds of Del Mongo. <laughs> right. We didn't have really any reception much there, so I couldn't call it to hear it ring or anything. Uh, I don't. Know. It's it's a pretty remote area. Yeah, or, I don't. I don't know if they'll ever get. It's, it's down in a pocket, so I don't know if they'll ever get cell reception. But I want to back up for a moment. Um, uh -huh. I actually knew the owner of that store. He was a former corporate executive in the food industry, and got tired of corporate America and opened up that little store. He and I chatted quite a bit one time. Uh, and you're saying that that guy vanished? I don't Do you know, know the details or. No, but they're. I did. They have a little story about it. Yeah, they have a little write up, uh, about, a write -up it. about him yeah. up there. I had the story uh, itself, yeah. 
I don't know. I thought I just assumed it was the previous owner. And maybe it was another previous yeah. owner that I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, uh, they did. And there was a park bench kind of out there that was made tribute to him or something like that around there. Just go and talk to the people at that store yeah. that bought it because they were just starting to organize it and have it opened a little bit more and a few more items in there. It's kind of buried. Well, that is kind of interesting, especially, and you thought that maybe. I'm pretty sure it was the store down towards the very end, yeah. you know, and then you yeah. turn oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. to the camp. Yeah. And you said that there was uh, some association between, you know, people speculating Bigfoot and his disappearance or? Possibly, yeah. yes. Interesting. Okay. Um, and when did this happen? Well, that happened. A couple. Yeah. It was like, say, anywhere from a year to six months before we went were there okay so 2017 something like that yeah okay um and i'm, I'm finding some stories stories here online so uh yeah, well, wait, yeah. These cats, just a minute that was another batch of cats that had so it was later because these ones that i have the one that i had now from there it that was 2017 when it was born. But these cat, other cats that I had, that came from Julie. So Madison was with us. Yeah. So that it would have been earlier, like 2015, 16, yeah. something like that. But I think it, or 2017, somewhere right in, in that area, 15, 16, or 17. Yeah, and it had been a few, a year at least, probably since Guy was found, not found, had been missing. Somebody else went missing before that, had they said, or yeah, something. Yeah. And then these people bought it. I don't think I'd have wanted to buy it. Wanted to, no. I wanted to buy it, not after I heard what I heard, and I just couldn't. Other yeah. people said they would go up there with motorhomes and stuff and stay. Park there and stay a few nights and stuff. And ah, uh, <laughs> not after that first and only episode I had there. I didn't go, don't want to go back. <laughs> well, that's, you know, and actually that's kind of how it goes with these things. You know, you can have somebody with an encounter and, you know, either the vocals or the visual or everything. And then go years and and nobody else sees one or has an encounter with one so did they leave or are they just you know laying low and hard to say yeah i think they almost have to still be there somewhere in a cave or something yeah yeah i mean well remember there's no such thing as Bigfoot. There's not enough food for them. You know, they don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> yeah, they were going to eat me that night. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's such a closed-minded statement. You know, I just, yeah. I can't believe that. Anything's possible. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's just one of those assumptions. Yeah. You know. People have preconceived notions, and then that's the, you know, whether they have anything to back it up or not, that's just the way it is. Well, you're always going to have your skeptics no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know what yeah. I saw, and you know what you heard. Yeah, what I heard, yeah. It was definitely something. <laughs> and the way Dave thought about it so thoughtfully, he just, was sure it wasn't human that it was some big animal or something he yeah he still he, he still yeah. shook up about it oh yeah he still 
Well, I'm just curious. Did it sound like that? You say that it sounded like uh, multiple individuals. Did it sound like they were arguing amongst themselves or no, having no. a disagreement or just no, uh, it sounded like they were targeting us? Yeah. They were looking at us and targeting us, like they oh, could see okay. what we were doing and we couldn't really see them. They and because it was dark by then, and it they were just hooting and howling and hollering. And I thought, oh my god. Oh, so you were the focus of all of it. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> now, did this go on? Did this was, what did, how long did this go on for? Uh, well, uh, a few hours. It, oh, my. It was, uh, probably from 11 o'clock at night till, you know, three or four in the morning did I ever start to feel a little bit of more ease. So you got a lot of sleep that night, right? No, I got none. <laughs> none. Well, no, I did doze off when it got daylight, some daylight there. And that <laughs> what's, what woke me up was the ruckus of all those birds and ducks and whatever was down there on the water. They were really um, excited about something. And I thought, man, that could be whatever that was. <laughs> and the birds. And Donna, just to make note too, Donna was petrified when they got back into town. She she got a hold of me and she was really shook up. I mean, it really scared the bejesus out of her. I mean, she, just her telling me, I mean, she was, um, that's how come I thought they'd be a good match for you guys to talk to is because she, she really was scared. I mean, you could see it in her face. You could see it. I mean, she was shook up. And she was helping me to find a, a place to rent. And there was this house down that way and she that was one thing it. i didn't want anything <laughs> no. to do with it. i wouldn't be left alone there at night no. and if i had to rent someplace way down there like that no huh. i don't know they must and be you had a camper is that right donna huh no you had i had a, a camper tent. no we had, oh, you a, had tent. a tent okay we, we went with the tent and and yeah. of all that screaming and everything for some odd reason the cat didn't seem to appreciate it no, the cats just, oh, they were scared and I, they were going to like take flight. And I, I had like to get crazy that we got the tent up and I had to get, make sure they got in it without jumping out of my arms. And, and her cats travel a lot with her. I mean, you yeah, know, in the car, in they're the used car. to it. Yeah. I mean, they're used to being, you know, on her lap and not running, you know, mm-hmm. she takes them everywhere. So it, it, it was very unusual for them to act that way. Well, it's interesting because cats, dogs, you know, there are animals, pets, as well as livestock have some kind of a sense about these things. I don't know what it is, but they just don't like them. Yeah, it was the oldest one, my oldest long haired black, all black kitty. That was the worst about it. (laughs) And then when he went under the driver's seat and wouldn't even come out for how we were miles away from it. It was. Did you smell anything? No. Well, I can assure you, my cats don't like them either. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is pretty interesting. Um, I had no idea that. Uh, this was going on, you know, in Horton. I've often wondered about that place. I've only been to that Horton Pond, I think, one time. Oh, I've yeah, been in... Horton Pond, that's what it's called. It, it just yeah. kind of gave me an eerie feeling from the beginning of going there. I don't know if it's from other people talking. They, they, I heard other people say something about the criminals there are higher per, percentage there. And so but that's what made me there. think it was a person. But then he just said, no, but it was not. Her boyfriend is a very, he grew up out in the woods and he, he knows is. the woods well. And for him to be so scared that he won't even talk about it now without getting upset, it, you, know, you know, animated kind of, he gets mm-hmm. kind of scared, uh, really is telling to me because of the kind of person he is. He's a very rational, yeah. um, you know, he. He's a big guy, too. So, I mean, uh, for him to be scared 
I would definitely be scared of it. If, yeah, if, if, if I was seeing him. that. I was seeing that in him and I'm thinking, oh my God, I know I'm going to die. <laughs> and he was just as scared when he got back and yeah. when I talked to him. I, yeah. It was... It, yeah, I know some guys were laughing like, what? <laughs> and then they go, I believe it. The others would say, I believe it. <laughs> well, the ones that are laughing, they probably weren't <laughs> camping there that night, correct? Yeah. Well, no, they yeah. Weren't. <laughs> right. That, that, that's usually how that goes. Yeah. Um, and not that it makes any difference necessarily, but um, I just wondered if you guys, did you have any firearms with you when you're camping? No. Okay. No, we had a machete. <laughs> My son would whack down a blackberry bush or two. We had a machete, and that was all we had with us. Right. And he was gone with it. We didn't know. That was a worrisome thing. I didn't know if they got him or what. And then to come to find out, he was just sleeping out in the <laughs> yeah, Brian was right out in the woods there, and right amongst it, and didn't even hear the big loud ones because he was mm -hmm. really sound asleep. Yeah, <laughs> so, describe a little bit what the sound was like because I've heard them, I've heard them screaming, and I've heard them do like a scream bark, and it, and it, it sort of has similarities. That's the best I can say is it has similarities to the human voice. But it's very different because obviously it's coming from something different than a human. How would you describe it? Yeah, kind of like the way when Dave went Coo -coo -coo, like that and made me get kind of like a that thing, like a hoot -do, hoot and holler kind of thing. Not human, but in. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I learned. I, I come to think that now it probably wasn't human. It was something big, but and there was two or three uh, or three or four of them, because there was more than just one. So I could, you know, the voice would go in and out, and then another one would be there too. And I thought, oh my god. <laughs> so you guys are camping kind of on that hill, and it was further up the hill that you were hearing those the, sounds. I heard the noise coming from. Yeah. Until that very last time when, and it sounded like a thump, landed, something landed on the ground, and then it screamed again, and it was like right outside of the tent, right out. Could wow. have just reached a claw up and just, or anything up and just ripped the tent open, but they left the tent alone and left us alone and didn't do that, but it sounded so close they could have, and I didn't, I just wanted to run for the car and go. That day, no, we can't go there. Can't go out there right now. You said the thump was just right outside your tent. Uh huh. Oh my! Uh, and there wasn't a there wasn't a log or a, a rock or anything like that outside. No. And then when it did get daylight, Dave looked around on the ground for any kind of tracks or anything, and he couldn't see anything. Hope it darn. I've heard that thump one time. Um, actually, it's up in an area right now. I don't think it's there anymore uh, where the Cedar Creek fire's raging. Uh, yeah. yeah. But um, we were, a group of us were out there picking huckleberries. And I've told Will this story, and I think I've told on, on this on the show as well, that it sounded like somebody took a small block Chevy engine from about 30 feet above and just dropped it into the damp ground behind us. It just went thunk. Yeah. So she could feel it. Yeah. And what is it about Huckleberry, Tom? Huh? I have no idea. You know, um, they seem to like the Huckleberries. There seems to be an association with these things. And where Will and I and, and the group, uh, you know, my brother and Adam and, and a bunch of us were out there in July, we were in an area where all of a sudden we started hearing these, they're not tree knocks. This is like something picking up a telephone pole and smashing the side of a tree at 2.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I went back there later. Well, actually, Will pointed it out to me. He said, oh, you know, I'm shining lights around. And he said, oh, those are huckleberries. Oh, so maybe they were, uh, you know, showing their displeasure that we were in their huckleberry patch. I don't know. I went back a week, two weeks later. And 
the huckleberries had been stripped, leaves and all. You could just see where something that had to be with hands had just wow. stripped all the huckleberries. People yeah. don't do that. If they're picking huckleberries. They just grab them one at a time. Right. Well, and I think they haven't they had uh, uh, didn't they have a report where somebody you know, some hunter actually saw one sitting there and uh, was running the whole uh, like uh, limb through or <clears throat> twig or however the huckleberries we don't have huckleberries that around was, here that, so I don't that know that was the I'm William really sure. that was the William Rose story yeah the, okay and he was actually the animal was actually stripping off through his teeth right. the leaves and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is a very gorilla type uh, and chimpanzee yeah. type behavior. Yeah, just taking the whole thing and just pulling it through their mouth and stripping everything. And then I, I've heard of people having some kind of thinking of an encounter of what such and up the McKinsey River. Yeah, up by Gate Creek, Gate Creek or something like that, and. Really, tell me about it. I, I'm familiar with Gate Creek uh, area. Just, it was a long time ago, and they just was out in the woods and relaxing, and they had some, I don't know, a visionary thing or seeing them uh, at a far, far distance, and it didn't, it just didn't look right. And then they stopped and stared, and they stared back. They didn't have any binoculars or anything. It was a kind of a far distance. They kind and of lock so eyes good. with you. They kind of lock eyes with you, and you're just memorized. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, but it's it's you do lock eyes with them, and and it's a different, totally different feeling than yeah. I mean, it's bizarre. And then Jason, my other older son, he lives in St. Helens. He goes up. His company that he works for has really good company picnics or parties or whatever at the end of the year and they they have they close government camp up at Mount Hood and they can do anything they want there for no money and eat anything they want for no money it's closed to the public but and and it's a big well-known area up that way about sightings of a big type sasquatch type things as a government camp and they got t-shirts and everything of pictures of them and also the irma bells are known for a lot oh, of sightings. yes yes i mean That's, my uh, grandparents had a place in oak ridge and when we were little kids we we hike into the irma bells and it almost looks prehistoric i mean it's such the setting so surreal looking and and beautiful and untouched you know and um you know i remember you know being a little kid and, and hearing people talk about different sightings up there and stuff. Oh, you said yeah, well, I wondered here. about, yeah, I did wonder, I've often wondered about Irma Bells, a friend of mine and I. Um, yeah, that's, that's a hot, hot place for them. Yeah, for it is. Locals, well, it's, but they don't talk about it too much up in Oak Ridge. They, they kind of don't talk a lot about it, but it's a hot spot. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I have well, listen, guys. She does um, West Coast action photos, and she, she swears she has. Yeah, that there. would be somebody you need to talk to. Yeah, she would just keep you going. <laughs> yeah, because she does all the McKinsey River, um, all the pictures of people coming off Martin Rapids. Mm -hmm. She captures them as they're going down the rapids in photography, mm -hmm. and she has lots of stories. She and well, yeah, <laughs> once in a while, there was someone that would drown, and they would, yeah, she, she wouldn't have the face yeah, to give to yeah, her. She investigated. Yeah. We'll get you in touch with her. <laughs> she kind of moved Cal down to California for a bit with his mom, but well, um, yeah. he's to come back. To me. But thank you for having us on. We appreciate yeah. it. I feel better because I've been holding that in for a long time. <laughs> well, listen, um, you're kind of part of the family now, so stay in touch, and uh, we'll do likewise. If um, you know, if you have any any further encounters, you get a hold of us. Let us know. We we'd like to hear about it. Okay. You can, it's but funny because you keep mentioning saw. areas that I'm very very familiar with. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys. Right. We sure appreciate it. Mm, well, thank you. I really want to thank you guys. Uh, we we appreciate having you on, and uh, very interesting stories. 
So thank you. But it's true. I mean, I I yeah. know what I and, saw. And I almost, I mind maybe now that I think back about think about it. Go to Horton Lake and look yeah. around some more. But Me too. only in the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would. I could find that spot yeah, again. Dude, yeah. I know I could find my exact spot too. I need to bring in a bunch of people with me, <laughs> with I, a lot I, of artillery. <laughs> no, you're you're taking all the fun out of it. Is it yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. I but I'm now I wouldn't spirit. mind, maybe. Yeah. That I. I, I want some big dudes in a with me. <laughs> <laughs> Some big, big guys with me when I go in there. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, thanks, guys. And um, like I said, stay in touch and stay on after we uh, after the show here. We'll we'll get the information on that other person you talked about up the McKinsey. Oh, OK. OK. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.